there's a tape out there floating around. What's it like to have that kind of exposure? What's it like? Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee were the original modern glamour girlfriend and tattooed boyfriend couple. Right now, we're seeing a renewed interest in celebrity couples who fit this Barbie and the bad boy pattern, like Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly, Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson, and Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker. Kourtney put her tattooing skills to the test and ink the words, I love you, on Travis's forearm. And all these romances feel, to an extent, like a throwback to 90s and 2000s celebrity couples such as Billy Bob Thornton and Angelina Jolie, Dave Navarro and Carmen Electra, and most of all, Pam and Tommy. The release of the Pam and Tommy miniseries coincides perfectly with this resurgence to re-examine the couple's cultural significance, as well as the most infamous part of their story, the leaked sex tape from their honeymoon that exploded on the internet. At the time, it was rumored rumored that Pam and Tommy released the video themselves as a publicity stunt. But with today's post-Me Too lens, the Pam and Tommy series draws our attention to just what a violation this stolen material actually was. This is so private. It's like we're seeing something we're not supposed to be seeing. In the years that followed, the theft contributed to a society of increasingly blurred lines between a celebrity's public and private life, which offered little protection for their privacy and consent in the face of a voracious media appetite for voyeurism. Here's our take on the definitive Barbie alternative guy pairing, Pam and Tommy, and why now is the perfect time to understand how the price they paid for fame. Did you make a mint off of that? I made not one dollar. You, well, I no, thought you guys it was made a deal. Property. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about all of our new videos. It's tempting to think of the glamour girlfriend, tattooed boyfriend couple as an iteration of the Beauty and the Beast trope, but what singles out these tattooed men isn't that they're unattractive, it's that they embody a rebellious, anti-establishment ethos that casts their partners in a different, darker light. Yeah, guess what my middle name will be when I leave Blade. Chaos. Blade is what Hectic. I Violence. Yeah, I like Blade. 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 Prior to meeting Tommy Lee, sex symbol Pamela Anderson was viewed through a very specific lens, first as the ultimate Playboy playmate, and then as CJ Parker in the more mainstream, less explicit, but no less titillating Baywatch. She was an archetypal Playboy bunny blonde, embodying that type more perfectly than perhaps any other. You are still the hottest chick on the planet. I'm Playboy. I'm You're a Playboy, yeah, girl. I'm Playboy girl. But this Barbie hyperperfection didn't necessarily send the impression of depth or an interesting personality. She became more unpredictable and edgy in the public mind when she made a surprising choice for a partner, Tommy Lee, the epitome of rock and roll excess, famed for his extravagant drug-fueled tours with Motley Crue and his seemingly never-ending list of conquests. Their love story felt from the very start like something unstable, which made it exciting. After a five-day whirlwind romance in Ken Coon, Tommy Lee and bikini-clad Pamela Anderson exchanged vows. Pam and Tommy weren't the first good girl bad boy couple to enter the public consciousness. The Red Hot Chili Peppers Anthony Kiedis and then only 16-year-old actress Ione Skye had a tumultuous two-year relationship in the 1980s. Arguably, Danny and Sandy from Greece fit into a similar mold. Sandy? Tell me about it. But it was Pam and Tommy's popularity that planted the seed for modern, explosive mainstream interest in this particular kind of couple. Tabloids obsessed over the weirder, more gothic details of Billy Bob Thornton's relationship with Angelina Jolie, like the fact they wore vials of each other's blood around their necks and gifted each other his and hers grave plots. It's a beautiful train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need a kiss, please. Sorry. Jesus. Rocker Dave Navarro and playmate Carmen Electra's relationship became the focus of its own early 2000s reality show, which played up Navarro's dark gothic image. To prove from the start, it was death to us part. They swallowed their wings and expired. While these darker, more brooding men seemed to make the women they were with more interesting in the public eye, on the male end, there was an element of wish fulfillment and fantasy at play. Despite these men being famous, talented, rich, and often incredibly body confident, showing off the countless tattoos that cover their skin, their alternativeness and divergence from a buff jock masculine beauty ideal led to them being seen almost as every men. So the knock-on effect was that these glamorous male fantasy archetype women appeared slightly more attainable to the average guy. What, what do you see in this Kid Rock character? I mean, he's like 100 pounds wet, 
And this guy wears these white beaters and these stupid looking hats. It's also impossible to ignore that the majority of these men come from a rock and roll background, where the rocker and the beautiful girlfriend is almost a rule. Rock and roll has a history of excluding women from the music side of things and casting them as groupies or muses, there to inspire or fawn over their creative partners. Pam and Tommy then were a highly visible proof of how being a male musician could elevate your status to the point where you would be rewarded with one of the most beautiful women on the planet, and how even if you're the most beautiful woman on the planet, people will look to the person you're dating to define who you really are. How did Tommy Lee feel about you posing for Playboy? Did you like it? Well, that's how he found me. When we're creating Take episodes like this one, we know that time is money. And here at The Take, we don't want to waste either with repeated trips to the post office. That's why we love Stamps.com. Stamps.com lets you print official postage right from your computer so you don't have to wait in any annoying lines. It saves so much time, money, and stress. You get access to all the post office and UPS shipping services you need right from your computer. And you get discounts you can't find anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS rates and 76% off UPS. So whether you're in office sending invoices, a side hustle Etsy shop, or a full-blown warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com will make your life a lot easier. All you need is a computer and standard printer. No special supplies or equipment. You're up and running in minutes, printing official postage for any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send. Stop overpaying for shipping with Stamps.com today. You can sign up with promo code THETAKE for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code THETAKE. If you only know one thing about Pam and Tommy, then it's almost certainly that they recorded a now infamous sex tape which was distributed by shady websites in the late 90s. At the time, the scandal was focused around the contents of the tape itself and the newness of how the internet was used to distribute it, allowing sellers to evade prosecution more easily than ever. What there wasn't was much suggestion Pam and Tommy had been violated in any way by having this property stolen, other than in interviews given by the couple themselves. Somebody just went and exploited the hell out of our life. There were even some implications that the tape had been released deliberately by the couple, a baseless rumor that the Pam and Tommy series debunks, based on the 2014 Rolling Stone article reported by Amanda Chicago Lewis that the tape was, without question, physically and illegally taken from Anderson and Lee's home. When disgruntled contractor Rand Godier stole the safe it was locked in. As Lewis observes, it's the fact that it clearly wasn't made for an audience that enabled the authentic, unself-conscious intimacy of the tape that viewers were so compelled by. Howard Stern once said, It's the greatest tape I have ever seen in my life. What's cool about it is that, like, you get to live their lives with them. You know what my favorite part of that video is? Is when Pam's trying to work the laptop. And then that, 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 For him. that crazy sort of, like, white trashy talk they talk to each other. Like, oh, baby, God, lover. Hey, baby. I love you. Hey, lover. I love you, baby. The lack of conversation in the 90s around the violation enabling this viewing stems from how the idea of consent wasn't widely discussed in the culture at the time, to a degree that feels kind of shocking now. Did I miss anything? No. Sure, just in time. And while the tape is estimated to have made at least $77 million just in legal sales in the first 12 months, initially the couple saw none of that money. I wonder if I'll ever see any money from that. They've sold it all over the place. I've never I seen know. a dime. While they did eventually reach a legal settlement, it's unknown exactly how much they got, and it was likely a small fraction of the actual sales, as well as contingent on them signing away the rights for future sales. The other flawed assumption of many conversations of the time was that because the sex lives of both parties were already subject to tabloid dissection, and Anderson had posed for many explicit Playboy shoots, there was a public entitlement to seeing what went on behind her closed doors. Shockingly, this was even a legal argument at the time. As Lewis writes, since Anderson had posed nude several times and because the two discussed their sex life in interviews, Penthouse's lawyer argued that the couple had forfeited their privacy rights regarding the video's content. Even in the way the tape is discussed now, that sense of entitlement still remains, as if because it's Pamela Anderson, it's fair game. I was a big fan of your Tommy Lee sex tape. The false idea that Pam and Tommy must have released the tape themselves contributed to the long-standing myth that celebrity sex tapes are always used to rebrand celebrities or gain them a spotlight. Paris Hilton's famous sex tape, released without her consent in 2004 as what we now call revenge porn, was mostly discussed in the media as yet another example of her shameless self-exploitation in pursuit of fame for being famous. And when Kim Kardashian's introduction to fame came via a sex tape, I only had that one movie come out 
out and no one told me it was even premiering. The rumors that Kim had sold the footage were widely interpreted to affirm and prove that this had been the case for everyone who came before her, despite counter evidence. You know there are people who say that you put it out yourself, you know that. Yeah, yeah. and you know, I think why would anyone put that humiliation on their family. And all this plays into the strange assumption that the public is entitled to celebrities' bodies. Pam's and Tommy's tapes release happened at a time when there was a stricter divide between the life of celebrities and the lives of ordinary people. Social media hadn't been invented yet, and the internet was still something of a novelty. A what site? A web site. It's this thing on the computer. People will go to it. They will order the tape directly from us. But news media had already begun moving towards something more voyeuristic. The dawn of news reporters roving the streets via helicopter led to iconic television moments like the LA riots and the OJ Simpson car chase, both of which gave viewers a more immersive, fly-on-the-wall, entertainment-style coverage of events that may previously have been reported in a more detached, factual way. The Pam and Tommy tape fed this newfound level of voyeurism. No longer were viewers content with looking at consensually obtained sexual material produced for an audience. They wanted more. The Pam and Tommy tape helped create a market just as the internet was developing as a means to satisfy that market. It's a short leap from Pam and Tommy's tape being released in 1996 to the lurid details of Monica Lewinsky and Bill Clinton's sex scandal being disseminated across the world via Matt Drudge's gossip blog, The Drudge Report, not long after. It really is the first time I think the internet is breaking a story of this magnitude. Yet, as well as creating a market, the Pam and Tommy sex tape incident illustrated how little control celebrities now had over their public image. Pam's and Tommy's paparazzi photos of their beachside wedding appeared even before their tape got leaked, a previous violation which was exactly the kind of evidence used to argue that they no longer had entitlement to privacy. The sex tape in turn contributed to a culture where celebrities have even less control, as a voracious tabloid press had to effectively keep up with this new appetite for voyeurism. Gossip magazines exploded, as did online blogs, and the paparazzi became an even bigger part of the media landscape, with the success of a magazine dependent on scandalous, candid photographs. Well, there was always a, a little bit of a hunger for the unposed photographs. As we had more of that kind of material in the magazine, you know, the sales just went um, up. Even despite the public calling out of the paparazzi in the wake of Princess Diana's death in 1997, Do not use tabloids as a source. You define the difference between tabloid and legitimate news. Their influence continued to grow in the 2000s, as we can see in the shocking tabloid treatment the public condoned of stars like Britney Spears, Paris Hilton, Janet Jackson, and Lindsay Lohan. And while it's easy to look for one scapegoat among the whole media structure, it was fundamentally a profit structure fueled by a public desire for voyeuristic content, motivation violating behavior. Even Godier and those who partnered with him in selling Anderson's and Lee's tape found themselves quickly ripped off by other anonymous sellers online, preventing them from making a fortune themselves. The watershed moment all this led to was arguably the 2014 celebrity nude photo leak, with Roxanne Gay writing at the time, this leak is likely only the beginning, because there will always be another leak because there is an insatiable curiosity when it comes to the nude celebrity woman's body. She puts herself in the public eye and, in turn, we are entitled to see as much of her as we so desire, or so I am sure the justification goes. Private behavior is a relic of a time gone by. These beautiful and the damned couples are in the middle of a resurgence. Courtney and Kim Kardashian have coupled up with Travis Barker and Pete Davidson, respectively, while the revival of Megan Fox's career has coincided with her relationship with actor and musician Machine Gun Kelly, who actually played Tommy Lee in the Motley Crue biopic The Dirt. I keep having this vision, right, where my drum set, it rises up like this, and then bam! smoke, lights, and, and, and the whole thing starts spinning around. But while Pam and Tommy's image was packaged and sold to the public by others, this new generation of couples have somewhat more power to retain control and shape their own narratives. Megan and MGK, like some of their predecessors, have created a mythology around their relationship, but it's one that's known to us from details that have all been shared by the couple themselves. From the reveal that Megan's engagement ring is inlaid with thorns, because as MGK says, love is pain, to the fact they apparently drink each other other's blood after getting engaged to the bizarre meet cute that began their relationship. You said to me, you smell like weed. And I said, I am weed. And then you vanished. 
Similarly, Travis Barker and Kourtney Kardashian have been able to maintain control over their relationship's narrative, with their introduction to the world as friends coming in an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Our neighbor and friend, Travis Barker, decided to come over to Chloe's house because his kids and my kids are really good friends. While Travis hasn't ever been a regular in the series, Kourtney has used the show to drip feed their relationship to the world, showing people maybe a different side to Travis that's at odds with the hedonistic rock star image. Yeah, do you want to make a house? A gingerbread house? The other place the couple have been able to craft their own narrative is via social media, which has almost negated the need for paparazzi voyeuristically spying on the private lives of celebrities by giving audiences direct access to those private lives, as well as the ability to interact with the celebrities in question. While Kravis's Instagram photos are still professional and manicured, they give the impression of a candid, behind-the-scenes look at the couple, satisfying our need for a deeper, more personal engagement, but on the couple's terms and with their clear consent. Travis also took time to cherish Courtney's love note he posted via Instagram. There's also something to be said for the balance of power having shifted in the years since Pam and Tommy were together. Then, there was a sense that these bad boys were leading these beautiful women astray, as if the women couldn't resist the pull of something that wasn't good for them. But now, the women in these relationships come to them with far more agency in a different cultural climate, and the idea they even could be led astray feels far-fetched. There's a real sense of equality in many of these partnerships with Kelly even taking second billing to Fox in his own music video for Bloody Valentine. I'm sad. I don't expect you to understand. And profiles of that couple take pains to at least pay some attention to Kelly's looks, instead of just objectifying Fox. GQ's Molly Lambert describes them as an absolutely gorgeous couple seemingly made for each other, and calls Kelly handsome, before remarking that Fox is the most beautiful woman I ever met. And while there may be a collective incredulity in the media about Pete Davidson's ability to date so many beautiful women, which echoes some earlier conversations around Tommy Lee or Anderson's following husband Kid Rock, the interest in Pete is less focused focused on a secret destructive darkness than on a fascination with what's so compelling and attractive about his personality and what that reveals about attractiveness standards today. He seems super charming. Yeah. He's vulnerable. Yeah. He's lovely. Great. His fingernail polish is awesome. Like, he looks good. <laughs> good relationship um. with his mother. But arguably, it's the ordinariness and healthy domesticity we're seeing from some of these new beautiful in the damned couples that's the biggest shift in celebrity in the era since Pam and Tommy. Pam and Tommy were anything but ordinary. They were famous in an era when fame meant living a life completely different and came with the cost of not allowing celebrities to define their stories for themselves. The irony of the Pam and Tommy miniseries is that it's a show about a violation of consent, but it's being done without the consent of those portrayed. Director Craig Gillespie has talked about wanting to change the narrative surrounding the couple, but neither was involved in the creative process, and Lily James' attempts to contact Anderson ahead of her performance as her were fruitless. Pamela Anderson has tried to shape her image in unexpected ways over the course of her career, whether through comedy, like her appearance in Borat, writing novels, or becoming a passionate activist for political and environmental issues. And what are the funds being raised for? They're going to go to the Pam Anderson Foundation, which supports environmental issues and animal issues and human rights issues. Still, the release of this series reminds us how she'll always be seen through the lens of what proved a relatively short relationship that lit the fuse for the celebrity gossip explosion of the 21st century. When control has been taken away from you in such a public way, maybe there's nothing you can ever do to take it back. You don't seem to understand what a big deal this is to me. I'm on that tape just the same as you. But this is worse for me. This is the take on your favorite movie shows and pop culture. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.